Hi, my name is James Gurney. For the last three years or so, I've been experimenting with an old-fashioned kind of paint called casein, and I want to take you along on the journey. Oh, that's pretty nice. I like that with the, um, the kind of warm sunlit spots in the pool, and then the cool reflected lights from the sky behind us. That'll work. Let's do it. And here's a little tip of using sloping lines to connect landmark elements in the scene. I've chosen a few rocks that I want to be able to find again when I look at the scene. And I'm comparing the slopes to make sure I have them in the right relationships. Now there's a variety of ways to proceed with a subject like this, but I want to get rid of the white of the paper. I can always come back to that. And what I'll do is use some of this raw sienna to underlay the lit areas of the pool and then use some of the blue underneath those blue highlights that reflect the light of the blue sky. I'm using the casein watered down, which gives it the feeling of watercolor. It's transparent enough to see through to the drawing, which was done with a water-soluble colored pencil. Casein, like gouache, will dry lighter than it appears when it goes down wet. And that's because it's a matte finished paint. Whenever it's wet, it reflects the light differently than when it's dry. Let's move to the rocks on the far side of the pool. On the left, you can see what I'm looking at, and then on the right, I'm using that brush to try to define those darks underneath the base of the rocks. Whenever there's a light, bright, high chroma color over a darker color, it's often better to underpaint it and then paint the dark color over. Same thing here with this blue. I painted the blue first and then painted the dark brown over it. Casein is a medium that can be used in a variety of classical painting methods. Thin, transparent washes, thick, opaque strokes, quick glazes, and then final, tiny details. Hi, if you enjoyed this video, you'll enjoy the full-length video, which takes you through the whole process from start to finish. It's all part of casein painting in the wild. This includes seven different episodes in all kinds of different environments. Indoors in a wooden boat building shop on a street in Colorado, a landscape along a stream, a horse ranch in Wyoming, a street scene in Kingston, New York, and a park in Montreal. So come with me for casein painting in the wild. Casein had its heyday in the 1930s when it was used by illustrators uh, because of its fast drying and its opaque uh, handling properties. What I wanted... Oh man, she was biting the microphone. That's going to be a killer.